Hello and welcome back to Rogue Trader. We are on Footfall, we have cleared the first area and we are going to the second area. And that's about it in terms of our plan currently. We're just exploring, seeing what's around and seeing uh, who we can speak to. We have some general plans, but you know, we're not quite there yet. So wait a second, so are we in the Shadow Quarters right now? Or, uh, no, we're in Void Dock Alpha Row, so what's the Shadow Quarter? I don't know. I guess we have no reason to go there. So let's go to the atrium first, and then we can head here afterwards. Okay. Cool. Um, there's just an, another area to go to. It's kind of neat. I'm expecting this game at some point to give us a, a little bit more freedom about where to go. Currently, it's a very linear game, right? As in, yeah, you got the option of, like, three places to go. But really, they're not options. They're just, like, they're places you're going on the, on the line, right? Is you just choose the direction the line goes. Um, at some point, I'm expecting they're going to be like, okay, here's like 15 different places you can go or something like that, or things that you could do, and then give us the option, which I think we're getting very close to. But we'll see. Anyway, uh, who have we got here? Nobody really. We got a store shopkeeper with a bunch of people in front of it. And we speak to you. Meet all kinds on footfall and can't tell uh, right away who just looks crazy and who is an enemy of humanity hiding among his faithful. Interesting thing to say there. I always right. keep my options. Let's open. grab this. Oh, uh, what what have we got? Fireproof cape, immune to burning. I mean, that seems really good uh, if we're facing burning. So that's the kind of thing we'll just keep around. Is that Argenta speaking, or is that Abelard? I think that's Abelard, maybe. This place was intended to be merely a hall within the temple, but now the whole city has been squeezed into it. Keep your wits about you. Maybe? Oh no, that might be Nargenta. Be blessed, children of terror. May the Emperor's light never forsake you. A rational decision. Ecclesiarchy temples lack the critical functionality that a void station requires, unlike the chapels of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Okay. And once you finish saying that, anyone gonna have a snap back? Nope. Okay. Lore Imperium. I always get These the columns done. appeared here back when the station was founded and when it was assumed that Footfall would become a wondrous palace in the stars. Okay. Yeah, so obviously it's fallen a little bit from that. Uh here. So we got some goods down there. Okay, lots of things all over the place. Want to grab the goods? Leaflet. We need no rules or leaders. Okay. Uh, leaflet. Now is our time, not theirs. Ah, oh. I see. Well, what's going on here? Rise to the top, or get left in the dust. The buzzing crowd has closed in on several harried-looking individuals. Some of their faces are smeared with fresh blood. The angry cries and twisted faces leave no doubt. A massacre is about to take place. Just cut their throats already. What were they thinking, letting that ship dock at footfall? They're all stricken. No, no cutting. We'll get their blood on us. We'll be tainted too. Better burn them. Ooh. Hieronymus... Doloroso, who we need to speak to. Be quiet, you scoundrel. Also, I'll try and change the camera angle so we can actually see him and not just a hand. A priest clad in a simple black raiment cuts through the crowd like a void ship crossing the sky. You dare pass judgment on others? What arrogance to think you have the right. Argenta stares at the sight of the elderly priest. That's Reverend Hieronymus. I'm surprised he's decided to intervene in a street squabble. I'm going to try something drastic with the camera. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. What's going on here? And who are you supposed to be? Hmm. Um. I am an envoy of the Von Valancius dynasty. You come from Lady Theodora. The rabble rouser bows his head respectfully. Pardon me, noble sir. We're not going to correct him. We were, uh... Rooting out heresy here. 
These scrawny ones, they're from the ship that came from the bowels of the Coronis Expanse. They got plague there, and mutants, and now they're spreading that rot everywhere. That tight, they're all... Silence? You must be completely out of your minds. A band of woefully dim-witted retrobates who think themselves bringers of justice? Who are you to pass judgement on anyone? All you ought to be doing is suffering and repenting till the end of your days. What's so wrong about that, Reverend? We just want to put these heretics to death. We're not heretics. The haggard man is on the verge of tears. We're refugees. I swear it on the Golden Throne. We served the Imperium faithfully until they hung us out to dry. Where were the protectors that were meant to shield the lands of humanity from nightmares? Traitors. Traitors and heretics. The lot of them. A murmur runs through the crowd. The people gawk at you, at the priest and at the wretched group huddling in the center. How tiring the motley sea of colors that fills this restless crowd is hard on the eyes. So many hues, but most of them are acid yellow streaks of fear, the red buds swelling, ready to burst and paint all who are gathered here. Cassia looks at the crowd of troublemakers wearily, and they shudder at the very sight of her. As for the hearts of those who have been forced to defend themselves, they are shrouded in purplish, a purplish black grief, but their words are as transparent as the ice that lies at the top of a glacier. But commoners are always deaf to others' suffering, for such is their nature. Interfering in their affairs is hardly worthy of you or me, Malachi. Okay. So, we can address them and say these are serious accusations. We can do a coercion with a minus five. Okay. Uh, I represent Von Valancius, the masters of the Kiava Gamma, and have a right to decide what to do with these people, and I command the onlookers to disperse. Okay. As for the rest of you, go to Doc Alpha Row and await further instructions. All onlookers will return to their homes immediately. The refugees can go to Doc Alpha Row, and I'll speak to you later. Or the people before you insult those instated by the throne to be above them, and thus they deserve death. Well, these are very low coercion chances. I'm going to try and do this one. Those are serious accusations you're spouting. I hope you have proof to back them up. What more proof do I need? The man shouts. Kiava Gamma used to be a prosperous world. My family transported goods there for generations. And then they came. They butchered, tortured, sacrificed entire blocks to the darkness. We were on our ship up in orbit and all these messages started coming in. Half the wardens down there just uh, joined them right away. They even reached us in our ship with some blight that made half our crew take their own lives. We barely escaped. We barely made it here. Why? Why did this happen to us? I wonder what this is about. Is our planet really under attack? Or did some devious opportunist send these slanderers here to undermine the, ra uh, the might of the Von Valancius dynasty? Who could it be, I wonder? There is one guy. I bet you've heard of him. His name's Kunrad Voigtver von Valancius. He ran from us not too long ago after having had his ass handed to him. He must be itching to get even. Get even by besmirching the dynasty to which he belonged and supremacy over which he laid claim? He is a scum, but he's no idiot. No, I think there is something else. There are many who wish to weaken House von Valancius. Either that or it's much simpler. These people aren't lying and their planet was captured by heretics and the rest of it they made up themselves. I can sense darkness in their past. I may not be an expert on Kunrads and their schemes, but when it comes to things like this, I know what I'm talking about. Okay. Well, let's see what we have here. Hmm. Um. Let's see how we want to go with this. Um. I think we have to say this one. We have the right to decide what to do with these people as they came from our world. Yeah, let's roll it. We succeeded. The rabble rouser looks at you morosely. I don't want to get in trouble over this lot. Refugees use the interruption to make off in the direction of Doc Alpha Row. The arrogance and self-righteousness of a malefactor. The priest shakes his head disapprovingly, then his eyes shift to you. I am Reverend Hieronymus Doloroso, 
head of the Drusian mission here on Fruitfall. I thank you for stepping in. Please come and see me when you have the time. We can talk then. Okay. Cool. So I think we did that. Alright, we've successfully neutralized them actually fighting in the square. Uh, I guess we're heading back to the dock, right? Always keep your eye We might as well. Um, I was thinking potentially we would go and explore everything else and then come back to it, but then I had the thought that uh, I don't really want sta uh, stacked things happening, as in I don't want it being like, okay, so we got, you know, these people at the docks, and we got someone else at the docks, and we got someone else at the docks, uh, because that I th sometimes gets a little bit weird in these types of games, so let's just deal with the issue, and then we can come back. Right. Um, let's see, where are we? Over here? Yeah. Personal pilot. Wait, where are the people? This is Doc Alpha Row, right? Or is it over here? Uh. Is there money Kiava Gamma refugees. Oh, there they are. The refugees from Kiava Gamma are looking at you. Some with apprehensive friends, some with concealed gratitude. Hmm. Okay. Um, I need information. What happened on Kiava Gamma and how did you end up here? We told you everything back in the square. Things are rough on Kiava Gamma. Maybe there isn't even a Kiava Gamma anymore. The planet was attacked by a horde of heretics. They shouted on holy prayers and cut down people left and right. We heard everything from orbit. Listening to one Vox cast after another, we realized there wasn't anyone left to save, so we thought we'd run, but it was like our crew went mad somehow. The captain smashed his own head against a cogitator, and so did half the officers. Everyone who survived did their best to steer the ship into the warp, and here we are. Only three ships made it out alive, ours being one of them. We don't know what happened to the other two, they never made it to Fruitfall. Maybe they disappeared into the warp, or maybe something else happened to them. Yadira freezes, listening to something, then she blurts out in a changed voice. The first beast is body wounded, crawled into a hole under the palace of an eminent lord. The second beast, its skin and ulcers perished in an asteroid grave. The third beast, its essence cursed, is curled up in the glow of a yellow sun. Okay. So the beasts are the, um, are the ships. So the first beast is body wounded, crawled in a hole under the palace of an eminent lord. So that's these guys. Second beast, its skin and ulcers perished in an asteroid grave. Second one hit by an asteroid. Third, um, went into the sun. Or into a sun. Uh, okay. Well, what became of the ship you used to get here? It is the property of the Von Valancius dynasty. Apologies, we couldn't save it. The ship was damaged during the escape. We're lucky it got us all the way to Fruitfall. It's at the far docks, but there isn't much use for it anymore. It doesn't look like it's going to fly anywhere. And the local re collagers have already removed some of the valuable parts. You can send your people to take apart whatever is left, scavenge some components. The map of the Expanse was revealed to me before the Sea of Souls roiled and tangled the paths. How did you, desperate ones, reach Fruitfall all the way from the Kranach system without a navigator? Frightened by Cassia's appearance, the refugee covers his face with his hands, trembling violently. Please forgive my worthless words. We were feeling our way in the dark, you could say. All we had is some old maps. We prayed to the God Emperor day and night that our helmsman plotted the course. A miracle it must have been your lordship. Interesting. You are hurling accusations at your masters. This is a sign of treason and it must be punished accordingly. Do you realize this? One by one, the refugees fall to their knees. Please have mercy. A few idiots shouted some things, that's all. We shut them up ourselves already. It was their grief and fear talking. Please don't punish the rest of us. Pascal's voice sounds impas in passive and cold. Vich vituperation directed at the Adaptus Mechanicus was likewise registered. Denial is meaningless. Okay. Hmm. Um. Okay. Uh. I guess I'm gonna say go for Iconoclast. You are pardoned to be board my ship and continue to serve the Von Valancius dynasty. I mean, yeah. In essence, they didn't do anything too bad. So, I think we're fine with that. It's not like they're actively spreading heresy, it's that they're just being mean. 
So, yeah, let's do that. Their eyes beam. Praise be the Emperor. We're saved and pardoned. We'll do as we're told. We won't say another word. Bowing hastily, the refugees look back away from you. And we need crew. That's one thing that we've been told, is we need crew. I also just want to check my um, stuff. Ooh, we're almost at level 2. Which will get us Master of Command, which uh, gets us bonus movement, apparently, in the first round of combat. What does the first one do? I completely forgot. Um, Rogue Trader and two random allies start combat with their temporary wounds equal to their own resolve. Oh, cool. I've never noticed that, but hey, Keep your that's fine. Wits about you. Right. Move along here. Oh, wait, you don't get the bonuses yet, do you? You get the bonuses when you hit level three, is that right? No, I'm, am I going crazy? No, level three is just when you're locked in. Um, I don't know. I've forgotten. <laughs> I think we must get the bonuses, and I've just not noticed. Next time we enter combat, I need to like pay attention to our health bar. Rather than just go, hmm, which person should I snipe first? I mean, it's only going to be like four temporary hit points, so we're not talking like huge numbers here. So, that's fine. Okay. We're loading in. Almost there. Almost there, and cool. Right, so we got some loot over here apparently we missed. Oh, it's on a lower deck. Oh, how are we going to get down there? Is that where it is? Wait. It's there? I always have a oh, it's down here. There we go. Okay, I like that it shows it on the map. That does make it a little easier to actually loot. Because <laughs> I'm uh, sometimes I'm just looking at it going, I have no idea. So there's Hieronymus uh, Deloroso. I guess we should go and speak to him, right? I mean, he is kind of um, someone we need to speak to to get uh, Argenta on our side. Before we do, though, I just want to have a look at this one that we had before. Um, okay, so it's just saying a catastrophe appeared at our world. Just seeing if it had any extra info. Always okay. keep your eye on the price. What's this? Oh. The sight of this cogitator would be enough to break any tech priest's heart. The machine is leaning slightly to one side, grimy, covered in scrawled drawings with frivolous writing scratched here and there on it, the casing. Several keys are missing and the rest are coated with dust. Pascal's resp Operator lets out a mournful hiss before he says grimly, The right of operation has been repeatedly and blasphemously violated. Requesting the identification and punishment of the deplorable acolyte entrusted with caring for the machine spirit of this machine. Let's try and repair it. After a series of creaks and groans, the cogitator's dusty screen lights up. There are several lines of text, section headings. Praise the Omnissiah. The machine spirit of this cogitator is aggrieved, but willing to serve. Accompanied by the crackling of a Beinharic prayer, Pascal's mechadendrites gently place a couple of keys lying on the floor back into place. Welcome. The screen flickers a few times before revealing to the world a text in Low Gothic. In the name of the founder of Footfall Station, conqueror of the stars, builder of outposts, the noblest rogue trader, Parsimus... Wayne, on behalf of all of his descendants, I welcome you. This cogitator was installed on the order of the illustrious Parsimus so that the needy may tap into the flow of his wisdom. Cast your eyes upon the list of sections and choose what you wish to know. Abelard's brow furrows. Parsimus Dwayne. I've never heard of such a rogue trader house. Whoever this Parsimus was, he sure thought he was big. Lord Captain Parsimus Dewayne, one of the trailblazers, brazo, one of the trailblazers of the Cronus Expanse, and this system's uh, the station's founder. I've read about his great deeds. Lord Dewayne was once a colonel of the uh, Astra Militarum, but by his will, later inherited a warrant. He accumulated enough power to gather a small fleet of loyal allies and venture out to conquer the Cronus Expanse. They say Footfall was meant to be his personal palace world, but the construction dragged on for decades, and Lord Parsimus eventually died of old age. His enemies instantly tore Footfall to pieces and turned it into the bastion of humanity we know today. 
one that is full of bandits, privateers, hustlers, and rogue traders. Pleased with herself, Cassia nods slightly to let everyone know that the lecture is over. Okay, about footfall? Footfall Station has been envisioned by the great Parsimus de Wayne as a palace in the stars, as majestic as the spirit and mind of its creator. As of the year of this cogitator's installation, merely a small fraction of the great Parsimus' designs have been made a reality, but already their audacity and grandeur are staggering. Footfall is to become the gateway to this savage and barely explored Coronas Expanse, a foothold for future conquer conquest by the Imperium and the noble Parsimus de Wayne, who acts by the Emperor's will. Codgecator wheezes and blinks, clearly trying to shut down. Emergency repair? The Codgecator whirs and the screen turns back on. One of the first structures in Footfall was the colossal statue of the Emperor. A whole asteroid was used for the creation of this sculpture, but even its titanic proportions cannot convey the awe that every faithful servant of the Imperium feels before the Master. The statue is the centre of Footfall in the same way that the Emperor is the centre and heart of the Imperium. As construction progresses, new, smaller asteroids are being attached to the statue, their surface serving as the foundation for glorious palaces and temples, and their inner tunnels as homes for the commoners and rabble. Okay, uh, Parsimus Dewayne's design? The cogitator flickers and grunts before displaying a tapestry of text. The great Parsimus Dewayne intends to conquer the Coronis Expanse and build the most grandiose structure, which will shrine through the ages, um, praising the names of it of its creator and his descendants. Footfall, the palace and the stars, the glory of great Parsimus' deeds will live on throughout the ages and its grand designs. The cogitator hisses and grunts as it tries to clean its insides by spewing out dust and detritus through its cracks. The cogitator hisses for a while, then the screen flickers and once more shows the words, The great Parsimus de Wayne intends to conquer. Pascal's Vox wheezes mournfully. The spirit of this machine is enraged and will perform its function no more. I will see to it that the profaners responsible for this maintenance are marked for servile penance. Okay. That's how it's done. The statue uh, undoubtedly depicts Parsimus de Wayne, the legendary rogue trader who founded Footfall. There we go. That's who Parsimus is. Right. Oh, good. This and there's more leaflets. Yeah, more leaflets. Rise right. to the top or we'll get spin left around. in the dust. Quick save. Oh, there's a winter scale uh, dynasty thing down there as well. Okay. Hello. Wait, that's not who I need to speak to. Oh, he's up here. Oops. I always keep oh, was this ours? Open. Oh, yeah, this is ours. Good. Right. Hello, Hieronymus. The man with a face so drawn it appears to be made of nothing but skin and bone fixes his unblinking bird-like eyes on you. The priest's simple black clothes have next to no adornments, and they do nothing to mask his unhealthy gauntness. In a cracked voice he says, The Emperor protects. Who are you? Actually, the Emperor protects, Reverend. But he protects only those who are pure of heart. Do you think yourself one of them? Be leery of this conviction of yours. Many who have risen to the pinnacle of faith have fallen from it into the embrace of pride, most degenerate. And you must be the young von Valancius. That name carries weight, and it is a burdensome one, for its reputation suggests that Theodora encumbered it with many a transgression. I wonder, will you seek to shed them, or will you carry on carry them onward, picking them along the way like ripe fruits savouring their sweet poison. Okay. Um, let's see what we're going to say. Are you you're saying Theodora was a transgressor? A woman of great gifts, but few considered virtue to be one of them. People whispered that power had corrupted her and made her believe that she was entitled to anything she wanted. It is known that she showed cordiality to the Xenos, and broke taboos, and violated dogmas. Then again, so do nearly all rogue traders. Um. Well, rogue traders are the Emperor's anointed. I act at his command as evidenced by his signature on my warrant. Very non-committal answer. 
And he did grant it to you personally. The Emperor has entrusted his servants with the future of humanity, but people are too weak and flawed to prove themselves worthy of his trust. Only suffering can cleanse us, but we fear it and thus remain sullied. How do you know who I am? The Emperor has blessed me with acute hearing, and the people did the rest. How many members of your crew do you think came to confess the moment they arrived in port? How long do you suppose it took me to piece together the truth from their words? The priest's voice is rasping and harsh, but he still managed to pick up a strange change in tone. There was something hidden beneath the shift in his speech, something that he did not consider necessary to explain. Okay, I do not wish to enter a debate with you. A predictable response. He looks at Argento, who is standing nearby, and his voice softens slightly. Greetings, sister. I congratulate you on your return. Was your pilgrimage fruitful? It was, Reverend. Let it be known to you that Theodore von Valancius's ship was attacked by servants of the arch enemy, who appall the heart of any righteous soul, she says, nearly hissing with fury. And not all of them met a fitting end. Some fled, and more than that, their blasphemous words clearly pointed to this attack being part of a larger design. Reverend Hieronymus, I wish to join the esteemed rogue trader's crew and help protect the von Valancius dynasty from the forces of the arch enemy. I am divesting myself of the responsibility of guarding the footfall reliquary. Um. Well. Sister Argenta stood by my side during the assault on the ship, and I could use her assistance going forward. Hieronymus nods in thought. Follow the call of your soul, sister. The footfall reliquary will be preserved even without your contribution, as it was in all the years preceding your arrival. Hieronymus smiles sadly. I know what it is that calls you to follow the rogue trader, Sister Argenta. You seek combat, for it helps you forget how hollow and worthless our lives truly are. It offers the illusion of meaning. Perhaps you will rel relinquish this illusion one day, or perhaps you will die before that day comes. Regardless, I wish you luck on your new path. Before you start on a path towards your new destiny, I have a request to make of you and your companion. Many among my flock are from the poorest, most dispossessed people on Footfall. They brought me troubling news from Footfall's shadow quarters. The darkest co in the darkest corners where the liege wardens do not venture, taint has taken root. Footfall is consumed by profanity, and even here, true heresy serving the arch enemy is r a rarity. Ah. The cultists who now dwell in the Shadow Quarters mark their abodes with a sun inscribed in blue and gold, then perform strange rituals and secrets. The weak find solace in believing these reports to be rumours, but I know well I, but I well know that evil lurks all around us, and I wish to see retribution. Okay. Um Why don't you go to the Lees with this matter? I do not walk the paths pleasing to the liege, Hieronymus frowns. Vladame is weak and riddled with worms on the inside. He seeks to please his Casabalika masters, those peddlers of relics of the unholy Xenos. Okay, I come across heresy surprisingly often these days. Indeed, dark times are upon us and wretched souls grow ever more eager to embrace heresy. Both on Footfall and elsewhere, its foul buds are coming into bloom. Troubling news is arriving from many planets. There are whi whispers of wicked things taking place on Kiava Gamma. And just recently, a transport ship by the name of Navika, teeming with refugees, arrived on Footfall from Winterscale's realm. Their world was stricken with blasphemous sedition, and such was its severity they had to flee to save themselves. Okay, interesting. Um, the liege refused to accept them and they headed for Foulstone, a desolate cloister of the righteous. It was wise of them not to linger in this den of vileness. We'll verify this rumor, Reverend Hieronymus. With great pleasure, Argenta puts her hand on the stock of her weapon. I almost wish for the rumor to be true. My heart yearns to battle some heretics. This is where I bade you goodbye, sister. Noble Malachi, is there more you wish to ask me about? 
What were you doing in Footfall? What am I doing in this den of blasphemers, pagans, and the vilest of souls, you mean to say? Well, Footfall is the first and last stop in the Corona's expanse. It is the point of arrival for those who have just started on their path, and it is where those who are reaching its very end return, their souls wounded and bleeding. I embrace both the former and the latter, so that they may cast an honest eye over their impurity. Furthermore, rumors from across the entire sector amass in footfall. If I hear crewmen whispering about a reclaimed shrine, shrine world, or expressing desire to carry the Emperor's light into the darkness among the stars, I help my flock in their sacred duty. Devoted trailblazers need assistance, both spiritual and material. Tools, equipment, even garments and simple everyday items. Anything that might help pilgrims on their long journey. And during the first days of the harsh frontier life, it's worth its weight in gold to us. May any help you offer to the effort of gathering such things be blessed. The path of true believers leads into darkness, to search for worlds that have lost his radiance steeped in depravity. Blessed are the deeds of those who give themselves into the void and the warp in hopes that their actions may bring light to the darker reaches of the expanse and deliver a previously barren world into the Imperium's service. Eronymous is silent for a few seconds. And all the more bitter is the realization that not all brave souls will succeed in their mission. Bootfall still awaits news from the Wasteland Wayfarer, an ancient ark of a ship headed for distant stars. Her last astropathic message was sent from beyond the Cenaris Malefactum, and the stars have kept her fate secret since. I bear another darker duty. The expanse is filled with tainted creations of unholy heretics. These insidious objects are a danger to the soul, but I know what to do with them. Should you on your travels come across dangerous, corrupted objects, bring them to me, and the reward for your vigilance will be ever more generous. The Drusian mission has much to share with the rogue trader. Okay, so we can trade now. I'm not going to say number two, because that one I'm just going to get chewed out on. Uh, I have a question about faith. Okay, we have many questions about faith. My sermon planted the seed of faith in the heart of another rogue trader once. Incendia Chorda. Perhaps you were destined to become my second fledgling. Tell me more about the Emperor. You think it is so easy to put into words his essence and splendor? The Emperor is the perfect deity that reads our hearts and grants us his light. He led humanity out of darkness and horror, he created our great home. He experienced torment and pain, which only made him stronger. That is a lesson to us all. Purity is not to be found at the bottom of the dirtiest hive, or in golden palaces, but only among the ranks of those who suffer. Argenta silently makes a sign of the Aquila, her bright eyes burning with unyielding flame. Aquila is the two-headed eagle sigil that signifies the Imperium. What is the proper way to worship the Emperor? Pray to him. Destroy his enemies. Touch not their poisoned gifts. Cast aside all doubt and be vigilant against the weak souls beside you. When you see a sign of taint, burn it away without pity. Pain is good. It tears the crust of vileness from one's soul. And remember that if you see no fault in you or around you, then you are not being diligent enough in your search, or you are being too lenient on yourself, averting your eyes from the truth. Okay, the Emperor's servants, who are they? You speak of the Adeptus Ministorum? Well, these heralds of his word hold great power. Every priest, myself included, is part of its hierarchy, and the Ecclesiarchy possesses the unique right to judge what is virtuous and what is malign. The Adeptus Ministorum prays and cares for the temples, and it sends missions such as my own to every corner of his dominion of humanity. Or, yeah, dominion of humanity. It fights against heresies. Um, yeah, I'm not going to say two. I'll be honest, two doesn't sound, sound iconoclast. Two signs sounds heretical. I'm going to stay uh, say nothing. Veronis po uh, pauses, then adds grimly, However, these are nothing but words. The real Ecclesiarchy is a far more frightening, vile, and 
is far more frightening, vile and dark than it once was. Many would consider your remarks about the Ecclesiarchy to be heretical. And many others would find them truthful. I am a preacher of radical teaching that renounces fear. I have left the bounds of the Blessed Imperium to carry his light into the darkness of the frontier, and I have come to know depravity firsthand, and I am now able to perceive it under any guise. I think I can afford myself a modicum of truth. Okay. Who is the enemy of the Imperium? It has three faces. The inhuman Xenos, who wish death, up, death upon us simply because they are unlike us. Also, I love how all these questions are like the most basic thing for the for the world, uh, like for the setting. It's like, who's the Emperor? Who's against the Emperor? And I'm like, I'm fairly certain pretty much everybody in the world should be at least able to tell us those two things. Like, you know, like they're, they're not entirely difficult things, but anyway. Uh... This is obviously for the player's benefit, so that you know what's happening. The inhuman Xenos who wish death, death upon us simply because we are unlike them. The pitiful subhuman mutants, abominations that wish death upon us because they envy us and are ashamed of themselves. And the arch enemy that reigns in the Immaterium, which wishes death upon us by its very nature. Adira starts giggling at Hieronymus' words. He forgot to mention people like me. My whole life people have told me I'm filth on the face of humanity. It's poison, it's bane. He stops abruptly with a sob. Tell me about Incendia Chorda. Have you heard of the Aspis Chorda? See, this is a question we may not know. Like, this isn't just basic knowledge. Pirate, blasphemer, xenophile, and egregious apostate. Incendia is her heir, and a rarity among rogue traders. The protection of the Holy Warrant typically leads to the swift atrophy of conscience and pious dread, but not in Incendia's case. She relentlessly hunts down pirates and firebrands and brings rebellious colonies to repentance, establishing strict discipline. The weight of her wrath is great indeed. The colonies she punishes are girded with orbital rings of her heretic corpses as a warning to the survivors. As her personal confessor and guide, I find no end to the joy her triumphs uh, bring, in, uh, bring me. Um, okay. Well... Since when is orchestrating massacres a sign of virtue? They aren't massacres. This is a war in apostasy, apostasy and treason, and in this war, Incendia Chorda is inflicting grievous wounds upon the wicked. Thank you for your explanations. Think nothing of it, young Von Valancius. Tell me about yourself. Neither my past nor my present hold any secrets, but take heed when gazing into my heart, for many dark thoughts lurk within. What's troubling your heart? Bad omens. Dark times have come. Ships from the Imperium barely appear in the Cronus Expanse anymore. In Footfall Shadow Quarters, Taint thrives and the people here are corrupt enough to succumb to it gladly. Rumors about the Expanse say the accursed Xenos have grown bold and are rearing their heads. They attack ships and settlements, walk under the suns of the Imperium worlds like kings instead of cowering in the shadows. What next? What adversaries await us if such disgrace is happening already? He shakes his head sternly. There's more and more talk about how poorly things are going in the Expanse. Some days it seems like I can't take two steps without hearing some peasant pontif pontificating on the matter. Whew. Even if it is as dire as they say, the Von Valancius realm will not crumble under the blows of fate, no matter how devastating. Chin up, Lord Captain. This is no time to lose heart and lament your lot. Okay. I'm also wondering whether we'd have more to say to this guy if we knew that the Drukhari had done something to the sun in the previous, um, syst uh, the previous system we were in. Hmm. That would be interesting. However, we don't, so... Not only is your hope false, it is also dangerous among his servants. There have been people of greater integrity who have sullied themselves in their attempts to rise above the rest. Who were you in the past? A wretched fiend, blinded by my ambitions. I served in my planet's Adeptus Administratum division. I was a shrewd and sly bureaucrat, and I soared to great heights, to the very chair of prefect. In thirty years, I turned my home from a withered fringe colony into a prosperous world. Our wealth grew as we bloomed. 
but the bloom was a veneer for rot. Opulence had depraved us, and luxury had seduced us with its sordid promises. The planet's denizens no longer wished to pray or work, they only sought entertainment and dangerous philosophies. A thousand vile heresies and a million appalling vices bred on my world like mould on a Nutribar. In those days I saw with my own eyes the shameless ugliness of the world, of, of the soul. I repented of my hubris and left the position of prefect and became a travelling uh, missionary. I have been one ever since. As for my world, twenty years later the Holy Inquisition consigned it to the purifying flames. Hmm. We'll say nothing. Such was the path to my faith. Um, okay. Um, let's take a look at what the followers of St. Drusus have to offer me. Let me see. Okay. So immediately we can just buy some things. So we'll get all the medikits. Enforcer helmet. What is it? All targets of taunting scream suffer a penalty to their willpower tests against this ability. That's kind of cool. Onslaught. Uh, consumables that give you a huge amount of buffs. Okay. Good to know. Imperial scroll. Bonus to lore Imperium. Ooh. And the Bloodhound Staff. Okay. The first use of attack of an attacking navigator power per turn does not set the power on cooldown and does not count towards the attack limit per turn. The second use of the power or the use of a different attacking navigator power on the same turn deals an additional plus six damage to all targets and six direct damage to the navigator. Okay. Awesome. And we could get the militant's cloak if we wanted. The wearer's first melee attack in combat can't be parried or dodged. I don't know if we need that. Right now, anyway. Right, that's fine. Uh, the only person who could use this is you. I just want to see. So this would also give you more willpower. Um, I think this is better. I'm not really using it for its ability anyway. So yeah, let's just give you the new staff. Uh, Lore Imperium would be for us. Let's get rid of the plus 10. There we go. And then Commerce is for going to be for you. So let's give you a Commerce buff. There we go. It gives you Lore Imperium, but it's really the Commerce one we care about there. Now, I could stack our Lore Imperium buffs if I wanted to, but I don't think we need to. I think 85 is pretty good, given that we've seen so many Lore Imperium buffs that we auto-pass. For example, uh, this one. Right? Like, we're so high just right now that we just pass them automatically. Um, in this mishmash of devices and cables, you notice equipment from totally different eras. Some ancient, some merely old, and others hastily tossed together in more recent years. So if we have a look at that test, we um, had a... 125% chance... Oh, sorry, we had to roll below 125 on a 100-sided dice. You can kind of see why I'm not worried about getting an extra plus 10 to that. You know, we're always going to roll higher that than that dawdle. number. It just makes sense, really. Anyway, uh, I'm going to end the episode th here. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.